Thank you. Um, Glenn's the rock star today. I'm the rock star. I'm just presenting Glenn's work today, which is about the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the quality of life of people living with MS, insights from a health economics perspective. <coughs> so our presentation contact, content today is um, essentially we're going to talk about what is health economics. We'll introduce our study, look at some of our research questions, um, the methods or procedures that we use for our study, the things that make our study unique. We'll also talk about who was the most impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, how did the COVID-19 pandemic affect these people, and some summary and suggestions from our work. So what is health economics? Well, health economics deals with scarcity and choice. This means that there are many demands on the healthcare dollar. Health economic studies help decision makers choose where healthcare dollars should be spent, and Des touched on that concept in his introduction. So this includes examining how decisions impact people's quality of life. So health economists are interested in, in measuring quality of life. And it helps us decide, or help decision makers decide between option A, for example, or option B. So quality of life surveys are one of, are one of the tools that we use to study health economics. And these surveys help us measure potential improvements or reductions in quality of life. A quality of life survey was used in our recent study of how the COVID-19 pandemic affected the MS community. And this study and its results will be the main subject of the presentation today. So I'll just hand over to Glenn now. Thanks, Glenn. From July 7th to October 27th, 2020, people in Melbourne, Victoria experienced a lockdown. This lockdown greatly restricted travel and access to goods and services. Under straight stage three restrictions, which were in place from July 7th, people were required to stay at home unless undertaking essential activities such as working, caregiving, or buying groceries. The closure of various businesses and community services, including gymnasiums and restaurants, and a maximum of one hour per day for outside, outside exercise. On August 2nd, additional stage four restrictions were enacted including an 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, a restriction on travel to within five kilometers of a person's home, and a maximum of two people per gathering. Restrictions were eased sequentially from September 13th. At the same time, the rest of Australia experienced relatively few restrictions. This was because very few cases of COVID-19 were being recorded outside of Victoria. As the lockdown was happening when our Australian Multiple Sclerosis Longitudinal Study Survey went out, we were able to look at the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown on people with MS. We had several research questions. First, were people with MS in lockdown harmed more by the COVID-19 pandemic than people with MS out of lockdown? Second, how much harm was done to these groups? Three, was this harm clinically meaningful? In other words, was the impact of the harm big enough that it was really important? And what parts of health were impacted most? A special COVID-19 survey was used to figure out which people with MS were harmed the most by the COVID-19 pandemic and how much harm they experienced. People who responded to the survey were given a score from zero to two. If you got a score of zero, you experienced no harm. If you got a score of one, you experienced slight harm. And if you got a score of two, you experienced significant harm. To measure how this harm affected quality of life, and if this harm was important, we used the Assessment Quality of Life Eight Dimensions Survey. The way this survey works is shown on the left. Simply put, it works by taking the answers to 35 questions and turning them into eight scores relating to different parts of quality of life, using math. In turn, these eight scores are used to make two super-dimensional scores, one for physical health and the other for psychological and social health. Finally, these super-dimensions are used to create a final score, which is a measure of overall well-being or overall quality of life. 
This overall score has a zero to one scale, where zero is equivalent to death and one is equivalent to full health. There are a few things which made our study special. Firstly, it is the only large study of how people with co uh, sorry, how COVID-19 affected people with MS in Australia. In addition, it's the first study of its kind to use a specialized COVID-19 questionnaire, pictured on the right, and a highly effective AQUAL 8D survey. The study is also special because it used mathematical tools unique to economics. Harm scores were higher for people with MS who were in lockdown, which tells us that they were impacted most by the COVID-19 pandemic. This result is shown in the chart on the left. Moreover, people with MS who were younger, had relapse onset MS, or worse MS-related disability also reported more harm. Notably, people with MS both in and outside of lockdown reported harm, which showed us that it wasn't necessary for people to be in lockdown, or people with MS, sorry, to be in lockdown to actually be affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. People with MS reporting slight and significant harm had quality of life scores lower than people with MS who did not report harm. Interestingly, quality of life scores were two times lower for people with MS who reported significant harm compared to those who reported slight harm. Crucially, the reductions in quality of life scores for both the slight and significant harm groups exceeded the threshold for importance, meaning that they were substantial and very much meaningful to the people experiencing those reductions in quality of life. Should have been on that slide. Ah, oh, right, sorry. We also found that people with MS who reported harm were about twice as likely to experience an important reduction in their quality of life during the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, about 44% of survey respondents said that they experienced substantial harm due to the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, and as is shown in the pie chart, harm due to the COVID-19 pandemic was widespread throughout the MS community. In addition to survey data, we also collected written statements from our survey respondents. These statements included responses to the question, would you like to provide any other information about your physical or emotional circumstances regarding the COVID-19 pandemic? Together with survey data, these statements helped us figure out that emotional well-being and keeping up with self-care activities, like eating well and exercising, were the areas of health people with MS felt were most impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Our study found that many people with MS were harmed by the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns. We also found that the level of harm inflicted passed the threshold for importance and that the most affected areas of health were emotional well-being and self-care activities. To reduce the harm experienced by people with MS during pandemics, we rec uh, during both the current pandemic and future pandemics, sorry, we suggest the expansion of both remote and telehealth services. Overall, we think our findings will raise awareness as to the impact of pandemics on people with MS. In turn, we plan that this awareness will cause proactive action Now, as I mentioned earlier, the respondents to the AMSLS are where we got the data from for this particular study. And so I give a special thanks to them for their participation. Without their involvement, this study would not have been possible. Your answers to the AMSLS for this study and for others help us greatly because it allows us to advise decision makers um, about the resourcing needs of people living with MS. We hope that you will continue to answer our surveys so we can continue to produce quality research. And of course, I didn't do this by myself. I have a list of co-authors on the board. Importantly, funding for this study came from the Tasmanian College of Health and Medicine and Multiple Sclerosis Australia. And as I mentioned, 
AMSLS participants and of course their supporters were fundamental to this study, as was the MS Con uh, Consumer and Community Reference Committee. And of course, as always, we thank the AMSLS um, data administrators, Hilary War, Carol Hurst, and Kirsty Hawkes for the wonderful work that they do. Thank you for listening.